Hi all, I have another amazing thrilling game from David Grosvenor. Leela ID triple one four nine against Stockfish eight. So the time control is the Fast and Furious, forty moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. And the opening setting is the French defence. So these are the book moves given until here. And Stockfish eight <laughs> likes the McCutcheon variation. So Bishop B four is a repeat, we've seen this before. E five, H six. Bishop e3, knight e4. So Lila is also repeating bishop e3 rather than bishop d2. Interesting. It's like her opening book is kind of self-evolving here, and this is what she likes at the moment. Queen g4, king f8. So this can lead into a, a fierce gambit. a3, bishop takes. c3, takes. Black doesn't take here, which we've seen before. Kind of thing, that kind of thing. c5 instead, which is more cautionary and just c5, putting the pressure on white center and preparing queen a5. Things like that. Bishop d3, h5, queen goes to f4, queen a5. And now here we see knight e2, so white is offering this uh, gambit here, and black actually accepts that gambit with knight takes c3. White now castles. And you might think, hold on a sec, in this position, the bishop's a bit awkward here, isn't it, with this knight e2? Why can't black play c? Four. It's a very, very good question. If bishop g6, then that's a disaster because of knight takes e2 check, and that's the end of the game, winning the queen. It seems in this position, knight takes c3 is possible. It's really cool, uh, this idea. Uh, if queen takes here, then there's bishop g6 without penalty, threatening mate, and this is just absolutely murderous for black. Black's getting checkmated. Uh, so here, um, instead of queen takes c3, say c takes d3, white simply plays the super cool as a cucumber, c takes d3, because the rooks are connected, which means a lot actually in chess sometimes. Well, like here, it means they can do active stuff like chase away things or win things, because after queen takes, that will be a disaster because of rook here. And look, the bishop on c8 is loose. So that would be a total disaster for black as well. So black has to tread carefully. This this forcing move c4 doesn't seem to be that effectual as you might think. Uh, so in fact, black took on e2, and this means bishop takes e2. And now the bishop's not getting trapped at all, but it's not also it's either it's not it's not threatening bishop g6. And in fact, this idea is stopped in its tracks if the bishop ever landing on g6. Well, not for a moment anyway. Bishop d2 hitting the queen. And you might think again, this forcing move c3 is a bit lucrative, isn't it? Queen c7 was tried. Um, if c3, actually, it doesn't matter. I think the damage is done here because that d3 square is, is obtained again. And bishop d3 next is going to be comfortable for white. If black tries uh, to get rid of the bishop before it lands on d3, this is a really interesting line. Here, rook here, bishop a6. There's actually queen g5 here, believe it or not, threatening mate in one. Because look, b6 had some cost to it, it's not covering d8. So if bishop takes, there's queen d8, mate. And this double attacks d8 and h5. So actually, this, then there's bishop takes h5. So what would be doing really well there. So it's interesting lines, but queen c7 is played. Queen h4. Knight c6 and c3, which strengthens white center. So, the pawn that was jettisoned. What what is Leela's thinking here? It's really dynamic stuff. It makes these games super interesting, and it's a gambit kind of position, a positional gambit. I think one thing is very visually clear: this bishop without the counterpart is often a menace in such positions. Uh, Dennis the menace because look at this diagonal. Look at this diagonal. It can be authoritative, and it can play perhaps a vital role later in any sort of attacking schemes. We see bishop d7, a4, so that does highlight that this diagonal could be at the bishop's disposal. Knight a5, bishop goes to g5 though, that seems a bit weird, doesn't it? Well, a4 kept a piece out of a4, and in fact, <laughs> the a-pawn is perhaps the sacrificial lamb to distract black's pieces to try and win this. Is this another a pawn Colombo type assassination job uh, for the rest of the pieces to get revenge on the king side? We see knight b3. 
Rook AD1, yes, the A pawn is offered <laughs> as a lure for the bishop. In fact, instead of just taking that bishop here, we have queen a5 hitting c3. So black is after a more central pawn. What leader is not giving that one away? Queen h3 protecting c3. And now queen takes a4. The queen herself has assassinated that poor little a pawn. So is black really going to win an endgame here by pushing the a pawn down? Supported by the knight on the destination square. Well, before the end game, the middle game was given to us by the gods, apparently, a famous quotation. And we have a move which <laughs> seems without any prospect whatsoever here, f4, because it seems as though f5 is locked against with the bishop on d7. The bishop was careful not to be used to take a4. It holds against f5. So what is the point of this f4? And in fact, king g8, what is white doing here? The only thing to win a pawn just goes into a horrible self-pin. And we know from our experiences, we don't really want to go into self-pins without a very, very good reason. Guess what Leela plays? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. <laughs> she goes into the self-pin. Bishop takes h5. It's remarkable, but there's extenuating circumstances here, as they say. We have this authoritative dark square bishop. Uh, the rooks are connected. These rooks are not so connected. There's a difference. The queen's in Siberia, the knight's in Siberia. Two pieces in Siberia. We've got a time limit to any attack. In theory, that pawn could crash through later if black's given 20 moves. But for the moment, we have the middle game still. Now, if black tries to exploit this, didn't, uh, with g6, stockfish didn't, then interestingly, g4, and what this has done, trying to win a piece, is weaken further dark squares. And it turns out here that bishop f6 stops the pawn moving because, you know, queen takes. And this is actually very interesting. Even though black seems uh, content to be a piece up here in some respect, we can see after this little sliding block puzzle move that the g-file and the bishop means the bishop, the bishop is controlling key escape squares. The, the king is the one which is going to be assassinated here. The gloves are being put on for the king here because uh, there's no escape for the king in these variations. If we look at this h4, g5, this, queen g4, white can take time here, a piece down, and simply crash through. The attack with these pieces over here seems irresistible. As, as the pawns get removed, it becomes more and more underlined that these queen, the, the queen and knight are in Siberia here. In this variation and that loses a rook for example so what is what is black doing here here then bishop g5 and then f7 the best move for black apparently is queen d7 which is not very helpful so uh so yeah it seems as though uh these variations if we have uh okay since here bishop g5 yeah so let's see these variations are uh, all seem to be pretty diabolical uh, let's just go back here because you might not believe this. Uh, let's look at another try. Rook h7, g takes, and what we're going to do is just use the g file here. And the queen can substitute for the bishop sometimes, but also this pawn now is queening potentially. The pawn's just simply queening. Yeah, there's disconnection issues as well over here. Uh, if the bishop didn't move, then there's 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 going to be other problems because the king's escape route is cut off by that bishop. So it's either saving the king or or not, you know, trying to do something about this pawn. It's a hopeless position basically. The pawn combined with king safety. So yeah, this this self pin seems to be completely working here. In this position, it seems to be in White's favor. Check the pinned comments of this video for the variations. It's beautiful stuff, but it does appear. As though g6 doesn't do anything. So black played rook e8. So white's kind of regained the pawn. King h1 uh, is lucrative, but also g4 is played. Uh, so this is a kind of signpost move that if king h1, uh, at least the g file is going to be used by white, the rooks. So black didn't try g6 here. Queen c6, we have queen f3, and now g6 is, is played. 
So this comes at a cost. It weakens further the dark square. So this dark square bishop is now a total monster of the position after bishop f6. We have rook h7. If we try g takes here, in fact, it seems rook f2, <laughs> even allowing black the luxury of closing down, it seems, the position doesn't matter at all, it seems, because of g5 and rook g2. So g6 is now on the cards and, and black gets torn to shreds. Bishop g7, uh, taking black's just getting torn to shreds here. Well, losing material, losing all the bets. White is a big advantage even though the king has managed to escape technically. So uh, so anyway, so rook h7 was played, queen g2, and again, if we test it here, it's more vivid now, this g file and the bishop in this line, where they're just it's just a pure mating net, basically. It's a pure mating net. So we have queen c8 instead of taking the bishop, rook f3. So intriguingly, it seems this rook left to challenge this defensive rook is the way to go here. Black desperately plays knight c5. Let's have a look at black's attempt to queen the pawn. <laughs> Just for amusement. Is it fast enough? Rook h3, a4. Bang. Bishop takes g6. And what we get here after bishop takes g6 is devastation. For example, like this. The queen and bishop do the job here very quickly. There's no time for this a pawn to queen. That's a pipe dream. So knight c5 was tried. If we go back to this line with a5 here, let's try and improve something with rook takes h3 instead. Again, the queen and bishop coordinate just beautifully. So knight c5 is one starts to understand the desperation behind knight c5. Uh, we have d takes d4. So uh, white currently is a piece up, but this is bishop seems trapped f5 so that bishop is made use of to attack the pawn chain here e takes g takes uh so yeah this looks like a really vicious attack bishop takes f5 is played if rook takes h5 then fg is very good uh it's the if if black tries to defend rook takes d4 just kicks that bishop out of the way g takes Queen g7, Queen g6 is crushing. For example, this is needed apparently is the best move, and that's just getting mated. So uh, this this does seem to be in White's favour. This whole position. We have Bishop takes, and now Lila kind of rescues that Bishop with Rook takes f5, leaving two Bishops against the Rook imbalance. Uh, queen takes f5 was played. If Bishop yeah, so queen takes f5. Uh, here, there's also, the position is so strong, by the way, that bishop takes g6 is also pretty good for white as well. But no, this is this is much stronger. This is strongest, I believe. Bishop g4, so it's two bishops against the rook. Now c takes d4. c3, as though this pawn's quite dangerous for a moment. It's not really. It's, look at the rooks. They're not helping the queen. So in fact... White just plays, Lila just plays h3, holding down the uh, h-file, reducing liability on the h-file for that rook. So that rook's really staring at nothing, basically now, near to nothing. Queen f2, the delicate queen f2, keeping an eye on g3 square, challenging the queen. Uh, there's not too many squares. We have queen e4, and now queen e1, double attacking c3 and e4. Queen d5, so the c3 pawn drops, actually. White's just massive material up, queen f3. And we see massive connected past pawns now off the takes in the center. It doesn't matter about this. B7's on the fire. D5, look at these connected past pawns. So this is just a totally hopeless position with D7, D8 crashing through now. So rook a1, <laughs> just to stop that dream of the a pawn is finally crushed. And it's eliminated. Yeah. And now bishop takes b7. This is just all over. It's absolutely winning for white. The game adjudicated is a win for white here. White can do anything basically. c6, d8, they're all winning. So that was quite the game. It showed the remarkable power uh, of the dark square bishop and self pinning, the justification of self pinning 
fantastic example because the pin is you know sometimes it is quite a long-term downside but it wasn't here every time black tries to win the bishop it seems the g-file backfire is just too strong even if black closes with h4 it's like the g-file still ripped open the bishop is just so dominant in that position stopping the king's escape so really fantastic dynamic chess uh, starting with kind of Leela's favorite gambit again uh, gambiting the double pawns which Leela perhaps doesn't consider the double pawns as a major pawn to lose uh, as other engines it seems they're more baited by winning uh, a double pawn than Leela cares to protect it Leela would rather seek it seems the dynamic aggressive compensation so it seems as though this might be one of Leela's you know future weapons of choice as well as she evolves she might keep this pawn sacrifice idea in her repertoire and it could be a real engine killer in the future as well I think okay so very very interesting I hope you enjoyed that as much as me comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much